Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike, and this here's Daisy Domergu. <laughs> I know Daisy. Don't touch I just his stick. Wanna, Don't touch his stick. I want to tell you guys something. <laughs> no, really. This thing has been sitting in the other room over there, and it's been laying in the floor. Uh -huh. Like, this, this stick has been laying in the floor, and every time I see it, I think it's fucking poop. So, Quentin Tarantino's eighth movie, it's The Hateful Eight. It's about eight strangers who get caught up in a cabin together. Nobody trusts each other. Kurt Russell's hitman, the hangman, and when he catches somebody, they hang, motherfucker! They's got to be hung, because a hangman's got to make a living, too. Mm hmm This movie was, wowzer, fuck yeah, it was awesome as shit. This movie definitely brought Kurt Russell to the forefront and showed that he still got the acting ability that everybody loved him in. He's got the tenacity that he brought in Wyatt Earp and Tombstone, but also the kind of funny way that he brought Tango and Cash. Like, yeah. he's got those mixed perfectly in it. And, honestly, he's the best part of the movie, but also Samuel L. Jackson is fucking amazing as well. This is Samuel L. Jackson... Jackson, Jackson, Sean Connery's Action. birthday. Sean Connery's birthday. Sean Connery's birthday. It's Samuel L. Jackson's best role, in my opinion, since Pulp Motherfucking Fiction. And you know what? Can we do a spoiler review? Yeah, let's do, let's, let's do, let's do this. This is a spoiler review, by the way. I want it. The the monologue about the black dick was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It was uncomfortable yet hilarious. That but that was that reminded me of the monologue from Pulp Fiction, where he's like, "Say what again?" And he's like, "He sucked that black dick." Long! Yeah, but you know what? As I was thinking about it, when I was watching it, I was watching him, I was like, you're Colonel Nick Fury. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it was. It was really, it was really a graphic scene as far as like the way, but you know what? The thing about this movie, it's got great action sequences when it happens, but the dialogue is what really sets it apart. Like they have those interactions together when they all get to that, I don't know, it's like a, a, dr a drashery, I don't know what, you, what the word is, but it's like a motel or some shit. Kind of like in the middle of... The, I, had, I knew it till you said it. Me, me... Me, no, what mini? But it's minis. Minis haberdashery. 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 Mm -hmm. You can have some, a dash of having. Uh, but peppermint yeah, sticks. Yeah, you like peppermint sticks only nickel. Yeah. Uh, but you know that uh, that whole scene when they're in the in the uh, haberdashery and they're talking and you get this whole like who's who and what's what's everybody's motive and who's in on what who's trying to help her who's trying to get uh, Daisy out. That was cool as shit, and especially. Because the two people that you never thought would be allies wind up being allies. I thought that was cool. Chris Mannix, which the guy that played that was fucking awesome too. Him and Samuel L. Jackson wind up being fucking friends in a way. Friends because of the situation they're in. And that was cool as shit. Yeah. And Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, I love his ass so much because even when he picks up Samuel L. Jackson and, he's, and he treats Daisy like shit. He doesn't give a fuck. And he was like, uh, like he, he fucking takes a, a, a freaking... Um, Gun and beats the fucking head. He's like, "How you like them bells, bitch?" And then, he was like, and then he was like, "Hey, can I see your Lincoln letter?" And he's like, "He's reading it." And he was like, "Tramp, do you know what this is?" And I do like the characterization of him because he's not a bad guy necessarily. He's got a bad like outlook on life because he's a bounty hunter, but he's got respect as far as like he's an asshole, but he's almost stupid. Like he can't help it. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. Like when he walks up to someone, he's like, "What are you doing, Fred?" He's like, "I can do with that." <laughs> he like walks away. His whole his whole aura, like he doesn't re like he has his own set ways and things, but it, he's so easily swayed. Like the letter, right? Like the letter turns out to be bullshit, with, which I thought was a perfect Quentin Tarantino touch. Like, you no, know, Jackson said I, I I use that letter, the Lincoln letter, to so that a, a white person can know me without judging me right away that I'm a black person. And it worked. Yeah, that's the, that's Quentin Tarantino's writing. Like a, a lot of people, I and mean, I get where people are coming from. The people who don't like Quentin Tarantino movies, their their knock is that they say. Okay, it's a shitload of dialogue that ends up meaning nothing to the overall scope of the film, and that's fine. Like I get I, it. I, I, get I get, that, I, Well, I understand what you're saying. I don't agree, but I understand what you're saying. But when you watch this, it's so fucking entertaining to watch. Like well, I don't give a shit if it means anything or not. Watching these two ter characters talk to each other, and adding the fact that they're all stuck in this barn, they don't trust each other. Wherever it does end up, it's like okay, that was the, that was surprising. I didn't see it going there, and it was entertaining as fuck to watch. So well, with this movie specifically, I think the dialogue did help though, because the dialogue shows it showcases how the feelings are towards black people and yeah. the interactions they have with the white people and it's just obviously I think it's recently after the Civil War so there's still all this fucking weird shit going on yeah. and like that I think actually helps to show rel uh, Abraham relevance. Abraham Lincoln! Tarantino is able to mix that dialogue with the action and always pays off at the end and the thing is this movie really was Clue with guns. Yeah. It's Clue with guns because you all, you're, you're trying to figure out what's going on and Samuel L. Jackson's the first one that picks it up. And then I love how Quentin Tarantino has his like narration when he's like, the day before, our heroes or whatever. Oh, yeah. I love that stuff. It's so smart and cool. I, I just think he's, and I'm not trying to lick his asshole because I don't do that. <laughs> I never go ass the mouth. But it's still like one of those cool things with Quentin Tarantino, how he's able to do that and make you feel like, because this felt like very grindhouse-y. 
Like yeah. when it comes on and the, and the lettering, and then he does this like the day before. Our our four or eight gentlemen were doing this. I love that stuff. I think it's cool. I think it's a bygotten. I think people get so far away from script and storytelling that they just wind up having these big action sequences of the yeah. Wild West, and that's all they want. And don't knock the beard. Because Kurt Russell's beard is what changed his career. You got this, and we're also going to review today. As a matter of fact, Bone Tomahawk. Kurt Russell looks like he's aged or whatever, just like Stallone. All the great action greats have aged. But, like, with the beard, with the old Western style, yes. it's fucking perfect for him. And he fits so well. And this is, like, one of Kurt Russell's best movies. This isn't just like, oh, we threw Kurt Russell in here. It's a fucking Expendables 4. This is one of Kurt Russell's better movies. Like, oh this, is, this is up there on, on his list of good shit. And I will also say, I'm just going to say it. Like, this is probably... A, My, this is my like the deep breath. It's my favorite Tarantino film since Pulp Fiction. Like I loved it. I loved it. I thought it blew Django Cha Unchained away. I, I liked it way better than Django Unchained. I thought the characters were way better. I, I just thought it was a way better made movie. And it was dark. Yeah, it was twisted. It was fucked up. It was gory as shit. The gore was great. When the coffee scene happens, I mean, shit just hit the face. That was crazy. That was nasty as oh. fuck. Man. I felt bad. I was like, Kurt, no. I know when, when he was throwing up. I thought, oh, he only had a little bit. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna survive. And he's, dude, when they threw up that blood, it was just like, Bleh! I love him, though, because at the end, he was trying to throw up that bitch's mouth. He's like, you're going to get this fucking poison yeah. in too. I love that shit. But then when, when Samuel L. Jackson shot him, I was like, oh, well, fuck. He's definitely dead. That sucks. Yeah. Like the guy from uh, Reservoir Dogs. I can't remember his name. Mm. Gage? John Gage? Yeah. I don't remember his name. You knew something was up with that motherfucker yeah, he, the whole time. No, that was the only thing about him. Like, everybody else played their parts pretty well as far as, like, being suspicious or being, like, believable in what they were doing, except for him. Yeah. He's like, I'm trying to visit my mom for Christmas. It's like, nobody believes that shit. But he was still good. I mean, yeah. I like that guy. He wasn't bad. But, but Kurt Russell, the best thing about Kurt Russell's character is, like, he's a giant asshole, but he's also really stupid. Like, he, he is stupid. Like, he, he's just, he's that old, like, the, the thing about stupid people is, is stupid people are the most indignant people that you will find. Forrest it's, Gump it's, a, it's, a, it's a recipe for fuck. No, Forrest Gump was not. That's one man, Jay. That's one man. It's one man that ran wild. <laughs> now, how do you listen? <laughs> but no, I and, like, he was so stupid, but set in his ways, but also a badass. Like, I love, love, love Kurt Russell's character. The fucking humor in this movie. The, movie, the whole movie's hilarious. It's a, Even it, though it's dark well, comedy, it's funny. This is definitely a movie that everybody should see. If you love Quentin Tarantino, if you just love Kurt Russell, if you love a Western, this is a, definitely, a movie that should be on your fucking list to Absolutely. see. Absolutely. Okay, as far as, like, being the better since Pulp Fiction, I like Pulp Fiction a lot. This movie is a close second for me next to Glorious Bastards. Like, I, yeah. I still love Glorious Bastards, but this movie might top it. But it's still fucking like. But either way, it's still one of those movies that you have got to see at some point. Like, I give it a nine point five. That's exactly what I was gonna give. I'm gonna give it a nine point five as well. Wow, we're in agreement. Mm -hmm. You wanna hang now? Cause you're a fucking liar. Mm -hmm. I believe you're a liar. Mick Lowe. I like Mick Lowe. Let's go. His water. Daisy Diamond Group. Daisy. Uh, and she was great too. She yeah, was she awesome. Was. I haven't seen her in anything in a while. Like she, she, she used to be big. She, she did a great job in this. All the actors, like he, it was perfectly. Oh yeah, well, we forgot to mention one thing. Um, Chang Ham's in this. Oh yeah, Jody. Uh, Jody, which is Daisy Domingue's uh, brother, and he's obviously the, the ringleader of this whole operation to get her away from the hangman. Uh, what I noticed about him was he didn't do a bad job at all, really. Uh, but you kind of got. Did you not feel like you got a little hint of what he might bring to Gambit with the accent? Maybe. Yeah, I can see what you're with saying. the because it felt like he was trying to channel as much Southern as he could. I mean, it was hard for him to do because he's obviously. He didn't. He couldn't do it necessarily all that well, but he still did all right. He had yeah. the attitude down, and it was still good. And I do the, the ending sequence, guys. When Samuel Jackson gets shot in the dick, oh. and the other Chris Mattis gets shot in the leg, that's funny as fuck, though. Yeah. Because when he's laying on the bed, Samuel Jackson, he tells him, he's like, and the motherfucker in the basement, come up. And he's like, throw your gun up first. And he throws. He's like, he goes, and then Chris Mattis is like. Okay, he can come up. He's like, he's got another gun. He goes, I ain't got no other gun. He's like, you better shit that out your asshole then. <laughs> and he throws another gun out. Then he walks up. And then, you know, Samuel Jackson winds up shooting Jody. Because he shot him in the fucking dick. And then the girl was like, he was going to give up. Daisy's like, he's going to give up. He's like, he was taking too goddamn long. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, they did a good job with the cameo. Because at that point, I knew Tam Shane Tam was in this movie. But by the time he showed up, I was so into the story, I completely forgot. And I'm standing here watching this going, I was standing when I was watching it. Just yeah. in case you're wondering. I'm standing here watching going, uh, how are they going to get out of the situation? They're fucked. Samuel Jackson's got shit figured out. And then all of a sudden, just perfect Tarantinoism pops up. Shane Tam's out of the fucking floorboard, which is much like Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. That happened too. But yeah, I thought Chain Tatum did a good job. It, the main thing about T Chain Tatum is that he did absolutely nothing to make me think he wasn't of the acting caliber for this type of movie. Yeah, but, uh, he was fine. And the thing is, I also didn't feel like Quentin Tarantino cast him for like eye candy or something. No, like, no, he was definitely not cast for eye candy. Yeah, and Tatum, 
Tatum, Tatum. My little Tatum. Tatum. Not my little bit of Tatum. Tatum Tom. He had to fight hard for that role. Yeah. He begged for that role. Well, the thing is, well, Channing Tatum's trying to get away from that fucking image. He doesn't want that image. And actually, I have, I have a lot of respect for Channing Tatum now as far as an actor goes because I can, he actually is a decent actor and he doesn't want to be like hitching on that fucking, like, I'm a. Plus you know, those abs, yo. 18 abs. What? what? I said abs because you said abs. I mean, 18 Glamour magazine. But he does have nice ass. Yeah. But no, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, but he was definitely a great, uh, great. He had a great part in this role uh, in this movie. And uh, I want to say really quick before we end it, uh, Chris Maddox and the Samuel Jackson relationship, how it starts out and how it ends, is fucking awesome. I yeah. love it because they're the two people you would least expect to get along in the way and partner up to fucking be together. Because I don't know. Uh, I guess he really was the sheriff of Red Rock. Yeah. Because he, he made that whole statement. Oh, yeah. He was a chef Absolutely. Right. And that, that whole thing coming into play was fun, too. But I kept thinking Christoph Waltz was Tim Roth. Tim Roth did a great job, yeah. too. As Mr. Fancy Pants. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he was great, too. I kept thinking, for some reason in my head, I was like, Christoph Waltz, Christoph Waltz, Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz. But you know what? I think the chemistry between Samuel L. Jackson and Chris Mannix was perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Because when he, when he came up there and he was like, when Samuel Jackson is laying, he's dying on the bed with his nuts shut off. He's like, I can't feel my ass no more. <laughs> and then he was like, how are you doing? He's like, well, my leg kind of hurts a lot because I got shot in it. But if I figured if I put my leg on this, all my weight on this one leg, he's like, I don't give a fuck how your legs do it. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> then here's the thing with this film. What you got to remember with this film is this, is that, yes, it, it doesn't really mean anything. Like, the movie doesn't really go anywhere meaningful. Like, it, it, oh, I, I come away feeling this way about something. I, I, go, I come away feeling fucking entertained. I did too. Like, this is a movie that it shows how ugly and nasty things could be back there. It shows how racist and ugly people could be back then. But ultimately, it's just a really, really entertaining, well-made, fucking written, perfectly filmed that, that reminds me like the 90s when you would just turn on the TV and watch something and have no idea what it was and be like, holy shit, that was cool. Right? That's how I discovered Seven. That's why Roger Predactor did die, because he found Captain Winky. 9.5. <laughs> 9.5 for both of those. Comment down below what you guys think about the hate late. Did you like it? What's your favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? All that shit. Done. Ugh. Black dick. I'm oh, my mouth. mouth. He's Daisy Domergoo. We'll see you guys Fuck next time. Face. I could be Daisy. <laughs> We watched a movie. Yeah. We watched a movie.